Euzu billahi mineşşeytanirracim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi rabbil alamin. Vessalatu vesselamu ala seyyidina Muhammedin ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecmaîn. Allahumme allimna ma yanfa'una ve anfa'na bima 'allamtana ve zidna ilmen nafi'a. Allahumme erinel hakka hakkan ve erzukna ittiba'a ve erinel batıla batılan ve erzukna ictinabe. Rabbi işrah li sadri ve yassir li emri ve ahlul uqdeten min lisani yafqahu kavli. Assalamu alaikum ve rahmetullahi ve berekatuh. Welcome to the Reflections on the Risale-i Nur by Bedül Zaman Said Nursi podcast series. This is Mustafa Tuna. You can listen to the episodes of this series wherever you listen to your podcasts or at the website www.reflections-rn.org. Inshallah, today we will continue reading and reflecting upon the 13th word and the section we will be uh, discussing inshallah is posted at this website you can go to podcasts then words then the 13th word and scroll down to the relevant section the 13th word is offers a comparison of the wisdom and guidance of the quran and the wisdom and guidance that philosophies, worldviews that have not been informed, guided by revelation offer. And it's a big difference. In the first section of this uh, this treatise, Ustad Nursi uh, went through four main uh, differences. And then he added, in the second section of the treatise, he added teachings, lessons that he had offered later in life that reflect this difference. In the previous episode, we started reading a special uh, section, and it is a um, difficult read. It was a, a single sentence that we read and uh, tried to cover, and then we read the rest of this section. This is a letter, actually, the rest of this uh, letter, but we did not reflect upon it in detail. Uh, it is a letter written after World War II uh, as a reflection on the effects of the war on uh, human on humankind and how this should be a cause for awakening and how that awakening should lead people to a search for eternity than the giver of eternity, the everlasting one, and how that search will, inshallah, lead them to uh, better familiarity with, uh, acquaintance with the Qur'an, the truth, or the criterion of truth. Qur'an al-Kareem, the honorable, the glorious Qur'an. So, inshallah, we will read this section that we already read and reflected upon uh, in the past in the previous episode and then move on to the rest of the letter bismihi subhanahu wa in min shay'in illa yusabbihu bihamdi assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu abadan da'iman in his name glory be to him god and there is nothing that does not glorify him with praise and of course this is the uh, interpretation translation of a verse from the Quran that Ustad Nursi uh, usually used while starting his letters. It's a beautiful, beautiful reminder and a guide that uh, manifested itself in the, in the Risale i Nur. And there is nothing that does not glorify him with praise. Wherever you turn, you see his God's countenance the ability to see signs of creation wherever we turn is an important aspect of the the path that the risale i nur uh, provides so Ustad nursi starts with this verse uh, his letters usually peace and god's mercy and blessings be upon you continually to eternity first we will very briefly point to a quite long and broad reality that was inspired to the heart on the night of power so, 
so this coming paragraph is what we already uh, read i'm not reading the turkish i'm just reading the english and then we will start reading the turkish and reflecting upon the text inshallah as the humankind recognizes as a result of its most severe oppressions and despotism merciless destruction and the bringing of hundreds of innocent ones to ruin because of an enemy in this last general war that is world war ii as a result of the dreadful despair of the defeated and the dreadful panicky rush of the victors as a result of the dreadful compunction arising from maintaining their rule yet not being able to repair their great destructions of as a result of it becoming apparent to most that the life of this world is temporal and temporary and the fantasies of civilization are deceptive and sedative of the high aptitude in the innate human nature and the quiddity of humanity becoming largely wounded in a dreadful way of the, as a result of the emotions that revere eternity and pertain to everlastingness and the natural love of humanity humanity becoming awakened in excitement so uh, of the emotions that revere eternity and pertain to everlastingness and the natural love of humanity becoming awakened in excitement of heedlessness misguidance and the most rigid and deaf nature shattering under the diamond sword of the quran of the very ugly and brutal true face of politics which is the most drowning most deceptive and the widest veil causing heedlessness and misguidance on the face of the earth becoming visible so as the humankind recognizes as a result of all of these that worldly life which is the humankind's metaphorical beloved is so ugly and transient certainly certainly and as its signs are becoming apparent in the north in the west and in america there is no doubt that the human humankind will seek with its entire strength the everlasting life that humans truly love out of innate nature and then what happens ve elbette ve hiç şüphe yok ki 1360 senede her asırda 350 milyon şakirdi bulunan ve her hükmüne ve davasına milyonlar ehli hakikat tasdik ile imza basan ve her dakikada milyonlar hafızların kalplerinde kutsiyet ile bulunup lisanlarıyla beşere ders veren ve hiçbir kitapta emsali bulunmayan bir tarzda beşer için hayat-ı bakiyeyi ve saadet-i ebediyeyi müjde verip beşerin yaralarını tedavi eden Kur'an-ı Mucizül Beyan'ın şiddetli ve kuvvetli ve tekrarlı binler ayatıyla belki sarihan ve işareten on binler defa dava ettiği ve haber verdiği sarsılmaz kat'i delillerle ve şüphe getirmez hadsiz hüccetlerle hayatı bakiyeyi katiyetle müjde ve saadet ebediyeyi ders vermesi elbette nev-i beşer bütün bütün aklını kaybetmezse ve maddi ve manevi bir kıyamet başlarına kopmazsa İsveç, Norveç, Finlandiya ve İngiltere'nin Kur'an'ın kabulüne çalışan meşhur hatipleri ve dini hakkı arayan Amerika'nın çok ehemmiyetli cemiyeti gibi ruh-i zeminin kıtaları ve hükümetleri Kur'an-ı Mucizül Beyan'ı arayacaklar ve hakikatlerini anladıktan sonra bütün ruhu canlarıyla sarılacaklar. Çünkü bu hakikat noktasında katiyen Kur'an'ın misli yoktur ve olamaz ve hiçbir şey bu mucize-i ekberin yerini tutamaz. And since the Quran of miraculous exposition So here Ustad Nursi is going to give us uh, a definition or a, a, a list of some of the attributes of the Quran. And these attributes are not, are not random. They indicate why uh, humanity will be guided to the Quran because of its calamities, because of the tribulations that it has had during World War II. And as we were um, trying to refer to in the in the past episode, this does not have to be about World War II alone. 
any individual who faces death as a result of a calamity, a tribulation, a sickness, let's say cancer, right? Somebody who survives cancer but close, comes closer to the, the, the face of death, somebody who survives an accident and recognizes his or her mortality, the closeness of death to us, the um the impossibility of knowing exactly when it is coming and knowing understanding that it may come at any moment recognizing the closeness of death awakens that that innate natural human desire love for eternity and then leads to a search for how do I acquire this eternity? Ustad Nursi says this happened at a, at a large scale with World War II after so many people died. So there will be a search. When you search, you do research, you, you, you look for sources. And Ustad Nursi here is showing us that the Quran is the best and only source that provides full answers to the questions of this search and so since the quran of miraculous exposition which has had 350 million disciples over 1360 years in every century and this of course uh, you know changes over time this is an average that ustad nursi is giving based on the number of muslims uh, that that lived on earth at the time he was writing it was less at the beginning it was it is a lot more today but it has had millions and millions of disciples followers in every century the rulings and the cause of which millions of people of truth have affirmed and endorsed with their signatures the rulings of the quran and the cause the claims of the quran that millions of people of truth people who have uh, cultivated their skills their intellect their heart so that they were given access to truth have affirmed and endorsed with their signatures which exists in the hearts of millions of memorizers hafaz hafaz with sanctity and gives lessons to humans through the tongues of those memorizers at every minute at any given minute around the world you can be assured that there are people reciting the quran and there are people listening to it with a with with, with a sense of with the recognition with the recognition of its sanctity right which gives the glad tidings of everlasting life so this is the crucial line here which gives the glad tidings of everlasting life and eternal felicity to humans in a way so there may be other promises for everlasting life or eternal felicity right there are other uh, religions philosophies that promise some kind of everlastingness some some kind of eternity to people because that is the the one of the most central human needs and it is recognized elsewhere too but nobody does it in the way that the quran is able to do it is superior to all else right in a way the similitude of which does not exist in any book not even the previous holy books not even the Bible, not even the Torah, not even the scrolls that were that were given to, uh, you know, uh, Sheet alayhi salam, Ibrahim alayhi salam. Nowhere. This is the one that provides the information of everlasting life and the promise of everlasting life in the with with the highest level of certitude and detail. You want you can't find it anywhere else in a way the similitude of which does not exist in any book and thus and thus the Quran which 
heals the wounds of human beings. So since the crown of miraculous exposition, right, which gives the glad tidings of everlasting life and eternal felicity to humans in a way the similitude of which does not exist in any book and thus heals the wounds of human beings. If I am sick, I'll look for a medicine, a remedy. And if I find more than one remedies, perhaps I'll try them and I'll take the one that heals my wounds in the best possible way, in the fastest ways, way, with most certainty, without possibility of repetition. Humanity is wounded. The reality of the reality of death and the humanities, each human being's perception and knowledge of death wounds their souls, their spirits. And as long as that wound is not properly treated and cured and healed, one cannot be happy in this world either. It embitters. It embitters the blessings of this world. Since this Quran of miraculous exposition gives the glad tidings of everlasting life and teaches about eternal felicity, which it claims explicitly and by implication perhaps tens of thousands of times. A great part of the Quran is about the realities of the hereafter. With its forceful, powerful and oft repeated verses with such certainty which such certainty, right? Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Iza waqatil waqia, leesa li waqatiha kaziba. Are you belying that that the day of judgment will come? Are you belying it? When it happens, there will be no belying it. That's what God says. For us, this is in the future. For God, time is not a limitation there is no limitation of of time who can say such a thing look at the certainty in the expression who other than the one who is creating it who sees it as if of course this is a metaphorical uh, expression as if we see the you know tips of our fingers the palm of our hand right in front of him here and now who can say such a thing? When it happens, there will be no belying of it. With, with utmost certainty, with its forceful, powerful, and oft-repeated verses, and unshakable definitive proofs, many of which we uh, read about and reflected upon when we did the tenth word, the treatise on resurrection, uh, those who have not listened to it may go back and listen to the relevant episodes of this podcast or read it from the Risale Inur. Right? It is all from the Quran. It is not Ustad Nursi is not sitting down and doing you know fiction or philosophy. It, it is not a it is not a uh, product of his imagination or intellect. It is all inspired from the Quran. Since the Quran of miraculous exposition gives the glad tidings of everlasting life and teaches about eternal felicity, which it claims explicitly and by implication perhaps tens of thousands of times, with its forceful, powerful, and oft repeated verses and unshakable definitive proofs, of course, and there is no doubt, that unless the humankind totally loses its mind, and a material and metaphysical doomsday erupts over its head. The broad masses and governments of the face of the earth will search for the Quran of miraculous exposition, and they are searching. There are times, moments of crisis, moments after crisis, when this uh, this innate desire to attain. Uh, eternity is awakened and the wounds of death are most um, painful there are those times when this search increases but humanity is always searching each and every human being is always searching the intensity may change rise and you know go down and up and down 
right now might be a higher time i have uh, i have seen people i've talked with people or heard of people who who say you know locking locking themselves up in their houses for such a long time and being devoid of human interaction and they breaking of the norm of their daily uh, routines have awakened them to this need for spirituality they call it spirituality but spirituality but ultimately it is this innate need the core need of the human existence for everlasting existence for eternity right it is that the search is higher now the search is higher unless the humankind totally loses its mind and to some extent that has happened too in post-world war ii there is this uh, awakened need and search that the human soul is inclined to but what happens the entertainment industry takes off consumerism takes off satan figures out other ways to distract people we enter into a world of this this um distraction right heedlessness and distraction and it's also continuing uh, we later right now we are in a world of digital distraction we can't figure out what to do our soul is um squeezed constricted we wake up in the morning don't know what to do we we need something we don't know what it is but we are in this vacuum we are floating perhaps in the air without uh, without being able to anchor our bodies and souls our existence to something without being able to latch onto something so what do we do or what do many people do rather turn on turn the tv on or turn the internet on and go onto your uh you know mobile phone and perhaps youtube or some other uh, entertainment channel and you know browse from one place to another to another to another to another this word browse used to be used to refer to uh, you know researchers going to a library and browsing through the shelves since books are usually in libraries books are usually ordered in a in a thematic way so if you are looking for one book the books that are in its neighborhood are likely to be relevant to your interest too so this this was browsing it had a proper meaning but what is browsing now it is mindless surfing through the internet right so there is distraction humankind has alhamdulillah not totally but to some extent has lost its mind or if it if it has not lost its mind it is being subjected to inputs that have the the same effect of losing one's mind half so unless the humankind totally loses its mind and a material and metaphysical doomsday erupts over its head the broad masses and governments of the face of the earth will search for the quran of miraculous exposition they will search for the meaning that is in the quran of miraculous exposition and as they are searching for that meaning when they come across the quran they will stop and say oh this is it we found it eureka found it similar to the famous literati of sweden norway finland and england now these um uh, Ustad Nursi was not interested in the news uh, during the war he rarely almost never asked about what is going on in the war and there are some wisdoms and reasons proper reasons for that too and when the time comes inshallah we can read about that he wasn't interested in politics he wasn't interested in worldly affairs of the world but but he was interested in humanity's search for truth and whenever there were 
apparently there were news at the time uh, in the newspapers probably or perhaps you know some people that he he knew who were traveling to these countries came back and gave him information about what's going on there he must have seen information about literati learned people in these particular countries sweden norway finland and england looking into the quran having having an interest in the quran the way that there is an interest in the quran today let's say in america um, I have seen this a lot in other countries too. So similar to the famous literati of Sweden, Norway, Finland and England who are working for the acceptance of the Quran and the very important society in America. So apparently that was a society that was uh, specifically uh, doing this. This is actually mentioned elsewhere. Some people in America, some a society, members of a society in America contact religious people around the world and some of them reach out and find Ustad knows these um, students. So like those people around the world, literati of Sweden, Norway, Finland and England or members of the society in America that is searching for true religion and once they understand, so they will search and once they understand it's that is the Quran's truths, they will embrace it with spirit and soul. Because there is nothing like the Quran from the point of view of this reality. Nor can there be and nothing can replace this greatest miracle. Quran is the word of the one who created reality, who knows everything, who is in charge of what is going on who is the owner of the day of judgment the planes the the accounting the bridge the hell the paradise who is the creator and owner of everything in this world and the hereafter it is his property who can give us information that is better than his he is providing us with this information. It is the best, most detailed, most coherent, most truthful information about what is to happen to human beings after they apparently disappear from this world. Do they really disappear? That does not agree with this innate sense that we have that tells us that is not possible you are created for eternity you desire eternity and there is this god feeling in each and every one of us that we are not here for the sake of being here this cannot be the be all end all there is something following this and if we were to be true to our God, or perhaps we should say heart, failing and follow it sincerely, truthfully, honestly, then there is no way that we will not end up, end up in the Quran. Now, of course, if it is provided us to, uh, as, an, as an option, and of course, in this case, those who have the Quran, who are blessed who are blessed with access to the Quran have a responsibility to share that to share that information everybody needs it people are hungry for the, for, for the truths of the Quran if there was famine in the country that you lived or let's say this let's put it this way if you are in a wealthy country with access to all sorts of amenities and food and you knew that there is famine in a country and you were put on a plane with food bags and bags of food and sent sent to that country would you not feel responsible for delivering that food to the people who are dying of famine in that country if you saw them in in, in front of you with your two eyes if you saw them dying in agony out of hunger and you had the food in your hands would you not want to share it would you not want to deliver it if you can say no to this question you have to then question yourself do you not have any compassion compassion 
right? Compassion is one of the most beautiful, beautiful emotions and places to be for a human being. And out of compassion, we all feel the need, the not only the responsibility, but also perhaps more so the need to share the truth that is in our hands with our human brothers and sisters and also to share it in a way that it that does not cover its beauty the truth of the quran the message of the quran is beautiful we need to share that beauty and in the process we need to not be veils before it but we need to share it in a beautiful way in a way that is becoming of its beauty unfortunate the, the unfortunate reality is that in many cases we become veils before the truth that we think we are presenting or representing may god guide us may god guide us saniyan madem risale i nur o mucize i kübranın elinde bir elmas kılıç hükmünde hizmetini görmüş ve göstermiş ve en muannid düşmanları teslime mecbur etmiş hem kalbi hem ruhu hatta hissiyatı tenvir edecek ve ilaçlarını verecek bir tarzda hazine-i Kur'aniye'nin dellallığını yapan ve ondan başka mehaz ve merciyi olmayan bir mucize-i maneviyesi bulunan Risale-i Nur o vazifeyi yapıyor. Ve aleyhinde olan dehşetli propagandalara ve gayet muannit zındıklara tam galebe çalmış ve dalaletin en sert ve kuvvetli kalası olan tabiatı tabiat risalesiyle parça parça etmiş ve gafletin en kalın ve boğucu ve geniş daire-i afakında ve fennin en geniş perdelerinde asay-i Musa'daki meyvenin altıncı meselesi ve birinci, ikinci, üçüncü, sekizinci hüccetleriyle gayet parlak bir tarzda gafleti dağıtıp nuru tevhidi göstermiş. Elbette bizlere lazım ve millete elzem, şimdi resmen izin verilen din tedrisatı için hususi dershaneler açılmasına izin verilmesine binaen Nur şakirtleri mümkün olduğu kadar her yerde küçücük dershaneyi nuriye açmaları lazımdır. Gerçi herkes kendi kendine bir derece istifade eder fakat herkes her bir meselesini tam anlamaz. Hem iman hakikatlerinin izahı olduğu için hem ilim hem marifet hem ibadettir. Haşiye there's a, a side note here we will come to it later. Eski medreselerde 5-10 seneye mukabil inşallah Nur medreseleri 5-10 haftada aynı neticeyi temin edecek 20 senedir ediyor. Second, since the Risale-i Nur, now we need to remember this is a letter that Ustad Nursi is writing to his students. And this is a letter that he is writing after being inspired by an idea on the night of power most likely the 27th night of Ramadan, the month of Ramadan, uh, a night in which angels descend on earth. Line after line of angels, right, descending. So it's a blessed night. And this came to his heart on that night, and he's sharing this with his students. Since the Risal Einur has served like a diamond sword in the hands of that great miracle, What's the great miracle? The Quran, right? The Quran is the greatest miracle that was ever given to the prophets. And the greatest miracle of the prophet, um, perhaps we can say like the greatest miracle of the, the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was himself. After that, it is the Quran. Since the risale i Nur has served like a diamond sword in the hands of that great miracle, that's the Quran, right? So. If the Quran is out there trying to spread its message, risale i Nur is like a diamond sword in its hand that it is using to spread that message. Cutting falsehood if it needs to be cut and illuminating the path of truth if it needs to be illuminated. Since it has shown the Quran's miraculousness and since it has compelled even the most obstinate enemies to admitting so that the Quran is miraculous, and there is a treatise, the 25th word. Inshallah, may we be able to uh, read it together. Uh, it's a difficult one. 
at least for me, it is a difficult one. Uh, that is named, uh, right, it, it, it, it is about the miraculousness of the Quran. That the entire treatise is about the miraculousness of the Quran. And Ustad Nursi is saying through that and elsewhere in other places too, since the risale e nur has shown the miraculousness of the Quran and compelled even the most obstinate enemies to admitting so. Since the risale e nur which is a metaphysical miracle of the Quran. So when Ustad Nursi says metaphysical miracle, i.e. it is not a miracle in the way that miracles appeared in the hands of uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. A miracle, ma'ujizah, uh, appears in the hands of a prophet only. So we cannot say that this is a miracle of the prophet because it is not appearing directly in the hands of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But it is emerging from a miracle that appeared in his hands, which is the Quran. So in a sense, it is like a miracle. Right? We they use this, for instance, in re reference to uh, you know famous uh, shiur. Right? If there is a uh, there is a master, it may be a master in scholarship, a master in Sufism, right? Who has really benefited from another master? Let's say there is one master there out there who has benefited enormously from the works of and the and the uh, himma the the the blessings of uh, Sheikh Abdul Qadir al Jilani, but he has lived 300 years later, 300 years after Abdul Qadir al Jilani. Right? In a metaphysical sense, in a sense that we cannot see and observe in the material reality, but through a connection that has a metaphysical reality to it, that person is a metaphysical disciple or a metaphysical son of Abdul Qadir al Jilani. So, similar to that. Since the Risale e Nur, which is a metaphysical miracle of the Quran that announces the Quranic treasure, the Quran is full of gems, diamonds, gold, right? That announces the Quranic treasure in a way that illuminates the heart, the spirit, and the emotions, and that offers the Quran's remedies, and which knows the, the Risale e Nur, which knows no other reference or recourse other than the Quran. So that's an important quality of the Risale in Or Ustad Nursi was a very well-read man. He was a, an erudite scholar who had gone through and he would read fast and he would remember almost everything that he read. He could he had the, a, a phot photographic memory, right? And he read a lot until it, he came to a point where he started to recognize that all of this needs to serve a higher reality and went through a process of spiritual search and the Risale Nur is the product of that spiritual search. After that search, he is not given access to any of his resources, exiled to a distant village and then he you know, lives under ex in exile or in prison, etc. But personally too, he decides uh, under a metaphysical guidance from Imam Rabbani and, and Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani, he decides that he needs to focus solely on the Quran. And he starts to receive these inspirations from the Quran. And the Risale Nur is a product of those inspirations, right? Which knows no other reference or recourse other than the Quran, right? Since it is fulfilling that duty. Which duty? What is the duty that it is fulfilling? It is a diamond sword in the hands of that great miracle in the, in the Quran. The Quran presents humanity with the message, uh, with the remedies that they need for their wounds. And the Risale in Nur is presenting those remedies to the humankind, opening them up, showing the the aspects of those remedies that are most relevant to the modern contemporary human beings to their needs it is a contemporary exegesis of the quran it's a contemporary interpretation of the quran an interpretation of the quran that focuses on and opens up the aspects the teachings the messages the remedies of the quran that are most relevant to us today and since it that is the risale e nur has emerged completely victorious over utmostly obstinate deniers of religion and over the dreadful bouts of propaganda against it. 
Stadner started writing these in the mid 1920s. He was exiled to a distant village in uh, southwest Turkey, right? It, he, he was supposed to have disappeared from sight, but but despite all odds, although although everything appeared to be against him, right? He just teaches these poor peasants around him, some of whom are illiterate. But the the truth that he is conveying is so powerful that it transforms them. They start to uh, write down, and those who can write, write down the message. And others who are illiterate take a piece of glass, put a sheet of the a, a sheet with the with a uh, you know part of a treatise of Stad Nursi written on it on the piece of glass, put an empty sheet on it, and then turn a light bulb under the glass and trace over it and copy this and then spread it, give to other people. All almost always at the beginning, secretly, furtively, while the police, the gendarmerie, the uh, village guards, etc., are trying to catch them writing this, reading this, distributing this. But the, the truth that is in it is so powerful that it transforms transforms them and that is one of the signs of true knowledge when you are exposed to it and when you internalize it true knowledge transforms you and one of the signs of it being true knowledge and you having internalized this it is that you cannot hold on to it you want to share it you desire to share it sometimes it is not shareable in the case of, for instance, uh, the, the the the the openings that one is exposed to in the process of Sufi journey, Sayyid al-Suluk, Sayyid al-Suluk, traveling to God, right? These are experiential, and some of those experiences are not shareable. You cannot convey them, but you still desire. You want other people to have them too. That's why you try to teach them how to attain it. In the case of the Risal e Nur, which is inspired by the Quran, and in the case of the Quran too, right? It is shareable. It is articulated in a way that the the realities that it is it is discovering are shared, are conveyable, and they also transform the one who is exposed to it. So these men and women around Bedou zaman in the early 1920s were transformed and it, and the sign that they were transformed the sign that they were exposed to and internalized through no internalized through knowledge is that despite all odds and challenges and threats and dangers imprisonment torture they they kept sharing it they kept sharing it they kept spreading the light if light comes into you, you cannot help spread it. You, you, light cannot be contained. And if it is in you, you will be the means of its spread. So that was the case 1920s, 1930s, 1940s. Exile, imprisonment, courts, police pressure, etc., etc., despite all odds. And then there's also propaganda that's going on against them. Uh, some intellectual uh, propaganda, some gossips and conspiracy theories, etc. etc. Despite all odds, what happens? Since it, the Risale Einur, has emerged completely victorious over utmostly obstinate deniers of religion, how can it be possible other than through God's assistance? How can it be possible other, other than the outflowing blessing? effluence of the Quran since it has emerged completely victorious over utmostly obstinate deniers of religion and over the dreadful bouts of propaganda against it since it has smashed nature now this is another aspect of the uh, when when we say nature here we write it with a capital N right not because we think that nature is something that has a substance to it and that has agency 
but because, especially the 19th century positivist scientists and scientists in general, which is a trend that continues into today, talked about it as if it is an active agent. Nature did this, nature did that. Why is this happening? It's natural. As if you have explained something when you say it is natural. Why is the apple falling? Because of gravity. What's gravity? It is a force of nature. Ah, okay. Okay, then then fine. That it's ex what is the force of nature? What is nature? Right? So this was a word, a concept that entered into people's minds and served as a veil that prevented them from being able to see reality as reality is. And reality is that these are all creatures. They are created. It is not nature that does, it is God, the active agent behind all of this is the creator and sustainer of all but that veil is and was and still is a thick veil it prevented people from being able to see reality as reality is and with many of its treatises the Rasale Nur smashes that idea that notion the firmest and strongest fortress of misguidance this is a his status is qualifying nature since it has smashed nature the firmest and strongest fortress of misguidance at the time at this time it is still very strong it is still very firm um, my personal opinion is that there are others that are added to it like consumerism entertainment etc but at the time it was certainly nature and it is still nature with other additions since it has smashed it into pieces with the treatise on nature, Tabiat Risale, one of the treatises of the Risale Inur. And since it has dispelled heedlessness and shone the light of monotheism in the thickest, most drowning and broadest horizons of heedlessness and the widest veils of science with the sixth matter and the first, second, third and eighth demonstrations of the fruit of the staff of Moses. Ustad Nursi is referring to other treatises here of course other treatises of the Risalinur. of course as it is now officially permitted so what does this all come to in practical terms of course these are really sublime realities that are elevating the soul and that we want to understand and try to understand etc so, but so what once you understand it so what what is the consequence of it of course as it is now officially permitted to open private study centers for religious instruction so this is late 1940s for the first time since the foundation of the republic the government allowed the opening of private centers uh, quran study centers it's private study centers for religious instruction which are necessary for us and essential for the nation the disciples of the light that is the students of the risale inur the readers, listeners, um, interlocutors, addressees of the Risale Inur, the disciples of the light, should each open a tiny study center of light. Darsane is the word for study center of light everywhere as much as possible. So if you are in a town, you are the, uh, you, you have been uh, blessed with getting to know the Risale Inur. And perhaps you have two, three other brothers or sisters in that town come together, rent an apartment. Uh, perhaps if you are a bachelor, live there together and study the Risale Inur and invite people to that house and let them study with you, read it to them, right? Make this a way of life for yourself. The disciples of the light should each open a tiny study center of light. Like turning of the 1940s into 1950s, that period in Turkey when there is a transition and democratization ha happening, and therefore the government oppression is being uh, gradually lifted. Open a tiny study center of light everywhere as much as possible. Why is it not enough that everybody is reading the Risale Inur? Is it is it is you know copying the Risale Inur by hand and? Uh, distributing it spreading it in this way you know sharing it with, with a friend of uh, yours is it not sufficient well it is good right but it is an individual act it is true that everybody benefits to some extent on their own but 
Not everybody can understand every matter that is in it completely. This is very important. Um, I can attest that I understand the Risale Nur more when I translate it for this podcast and read in the podcast than when I when I read it individually. I can also attest that when I read the Risale Nur in an actual gathering of brothers or when somebody else reads in that actual gathering of brothers and perhaps sometimes there's a discussion that follows, questions are asked, explanations are made, inspirations are shared, etc. I understand more. The benefit that I get from it under those circumstances when it is shared is more. One wisdom in this, one reason uh, perhaps in this might be that those meanings, those meanings are sent to our hearts by God. This is not a mechanical process. It is God who puts those meanings in our hearts. And oftentimes the people in a gathering share the blessing of those meanings together and God sends those meanings in accordance with the one who is the most needy in the group. So if there are five people sitting together and there is one who feels the need for those realities the most, perhaps 10 times more than the others. The others are not as contemplative perhaps, or they are not going through life circumstances that are making them as needy for those truths and realities, perhaps, right? So that one who is the most needy in the group needs it. And God sends those meanings, perhaps by putting it in the mouth of the one who is reading and explaining the Risale Inur. So it is not the one who is reading and explaining. It is the one who feels the need most. And when you do it in a group, right, you are benefiting from the weakest in the group. The weakest meaning the one who is in, in most need of God's blessings. So it is true that everybody benefits to some extent on their own, but not everybody can understand every matter that is in it completely. So another aspect of this, of course, is that somebody might have uh, some extra information that's going to help this person understand the matter better so that person can share it so make this into a group effort a communal effort God's hand is uh, with the jama'ah with the congregation if you know one other person wherever you are living and this podcast is being listened to all over the world so wherever you are, if you know one other person who knows the Risale Inur or, or even better, who you think is in need of the truths that are in the Risale Inur, go find that person. Open the Risale Inur. Come together once a week, two, you know, once every two weeks. If you can every day. Come together. Open it and read it and try to understand it. Share your inspirations. It is true that everybody benefits to some extent on their own, but not everybody can understand every matter that is in it completely. Furthermore, since these are explanations of matters of faith, they are knowledge, gnosis, and worship at the same time. There's a side note here. Side note. If one knows and is not in need of learning, let's assume, uh, you know, Let's assume that, again, there are these five brothers in a town who come together and read the Risale Inur once a week, but one of them is actually a, a well-learned scholar, a graduate of the madrasa. Perhaps he is a mudarris, a professor teaching at the madrasa. He is not in need of learning, although there will be aspects of the Risale Inur uh, that are inspired by the Quran, that are novel and new, etc., etc., but perhaps he, he is exposed to similars of those uh, truths, and, and because of this, he doesn't feel that he should be learning something here and now, right? So if one knows and is not in need of learning, he is in need of worship. He is either yearning for Gnosis or one's presence. He is either yearning for that deeper understanding and realization of truth or one's presence, presence of God. 
being in the presence of God. And what does this mean? Well, when people come together like that and are studying together, reading about the realities of the, the Quran, they are talking about God, God's attributes, the signs in the creation. They are they are in the they are engaged in the uh, in contemplation, which is a form of worship. Angels come, angels find them. There, there is this light that comes out of that gathering, and angels come and and you know gather on top of them and make a column going all the way to you know God's presence and tell God, oh God, these slaves of yours are remembering you, right? And that brings down blessings and God's uh, uh, you know salam and peace and sukuna. Uh, tranquility etc so there is presence in those gatherings in gatherings of worship there is presence and Ustad Nursi is here uh, saying here uh, the the uh, treatises of the Risale Inur are not just matters of faith or they are not just explanations of the matters of faith they are, they are not just uh, information right they are knowledge gnosis there is this deeper understanding of reality in it and it's worship at the same time and it is worship, right? This is not, uh, you know, special to the Risale Inur either. There is no, uh, you know, claim for uh, distinction here. There is a distinction that belongs to uh, the Risale Inur, but the distinction belongs to the Quran. It is, it is, it is only because of it being an interpretation of the Quran and being inspired by the Quran that it has a distinction. And other books that are in inspired by the Quran and the prophetic light also have distinction and engaging them is worship and that kind of a gathering is an opportunity for uh for being blessed with gnosis deeper understanding and realization and also presence it is because of this that this is a lesson with benefit for all so this was a side note then start to see continues god willing corresponding to the five to ten years spent in the old madrasas, the madrasas of light, that is, these uh, study centers that he is proposing that his students open now, and they have been opened, right? There are probably thousands of them around the world today. The madrasas of light will secure the same results. Now, same results in five to ten weeks. Same results as what? Same results as what was acquired at the madrasas of the old times in five to ten years now we need to understand this as uh, you know, what it truly means what was the point of attending a madrasa and studying there is it to learn memorize texts is it to learn how many uh, you know faraid are in the uh, prayer and how many uh, sunnas are in a in doing wudu etc etc all of these are very important right but all of these are very important because that knowledge and the practice the worship the ibadah that follows the that knowledge leads one to god to a what what the quran has called qalb salim to, to a sound to attaining a sound heart to a realization to a realization about God's existence, oneness, and manifestation as the only creator and sustainer and provider and source of beauty and majesty and perfection as manifest in each and everything in the creation. So the Risale Inur does that. It offers a shorter path a shorter path to the distracted human beings of this age. Remedies are administered according to the need. If a person is sick and needs one dose of a, rem of a remedy in order to be cured, you administer one dose. The people of this age are very sick. They need those strong doses. And God, out of his mercy, provided that strong dose in the risale i nur uh, through the Qur'an uh, for the people of this time. For the people of the 13th century, um, 
you know, according to the conventional calendar that we are using, for the people of the 13th century, he provided remedies that were appropriate for those people. For the people of the 17th century, he provided remedies that were appropriate for the people of the 17th century. For us, he provided these really strong, concentrated, concentrated remedies in the Risale Inur. So, God willing, corresponding to the five to ten years spent in the old madrasas, the madrasas of light will secure the same results in five to ten weeks, and they have been so doing for twenty years. They have been so doing, and although they were not darsanas like that, that there were gatherings. Uh, the Sarinur students were coming together and reading. They were not study centers, but gatherings. They have been so doing for twenty years. They have been sowing for now. They have been sowing for uh, maybe ninety years, right? It is it is a proven fact. It is a proven fact that millions around the world can attest to. Hem. He, the, this this was the core of this uh, letter, but there is uh, you know some addition in some uh, editions of the Risale. You know this uh, following section is not uh, taken is not a uh, printed here it is printed elsewhere where the letters are uh, but i would prefer to read the letter in its entirety so hem hükümet ve millet ve vatana hem hayatı dünyevisine ve siyasiyesine ve uhreviyesine pek çok faydası bulunan bu kur'an leme adlarına ve dellalı bulunan risale-i nura değil ilişmek belki tamamıyla terviç ve neşne çalışmaları elzemdir ki Geçen dehşetli günahlara kefare et ve gelecek müthiş belalara ve anarşistliğe bir sed olabilsin. Again, this is turn of the 1950s and an address to the government and people in power. Moreover, for the sake of their worldly and political lives as well as their hereafter, it is essential for them not to interfere with not interfere with after all, but to work for the promotion and publication of these flashes of the Quran. So if the Quran is a is like a sun, right? The treatises of the Risale Nur are like flashes that are, uh, you know, that are coming from the light of that sun. These flashes of the Quran, which have many benefits for this government, this nation, and this country, and it has benefits for any government, any nation, any country. If nothing else, wherever the Risale Nur has entered that is entered in the hearts and is taken as a guide it has served the preservation of peace there have been unfortunate events especially in the near past that uh, people may use to contradict this statement but it is not because uh, the Risale Nur can lead people to any sort of violence uh, or or conflict etc it is because sometimes people do not understand what they read do not understand and perhaps even use the light that is in these blessed texts as an instrument to promote other uh, ideas and interests anyway wherever the Risale Nur has truly entered it has served for the, the preservation of faith and peace and broad, broad blessings which have many benefits for this government this, na this nation and this country and I would say any country and of the Risale Nur as their announcer so they should not uh, they should not interfere with it but they should promote it right those flashes of the Quran they should promote those truths of the Quran and, and the Risale Nur as their announcer, as the announcer of those truths. So that this can be an atonement for the dreadful sins of the past. This refers to what happened in Turkey between the 1950s, uh, I'm sorry, 1920s and 1950s when madrasas were closed, Sufi orders were banned, the Arabic the letters were banned, uh, people were uh, encouraged to uh, I don't know, women were encouraged to take their scarves off uh, attires that had for centuries been associated with uh, Islam were banned etc etc horrible things happened the Adam was 
uh, somehow translated into Turkish and the Mu'addins, the Adhan callers were required to read and recite called Adhan in Turkish all sorts of nonsense all sorts of sins were committed and Ustad Nursi is saying now that was done it's in the past and early 1950s now there's a new government um, promote these truths and there's Salih Nur as their announcer nothing else the, you don't you, you don't promote Risale Nur for the sake of the Risale Nur. You don't do it for the sake of Bedir Zaman Said Nursi. You do it because because it is presenting you the uh, the truth of the Quran. It's interpretation of the Quran. The value, the honor, the glory belongs to the Quran, so that this can be an atonement for the dreadful sins of the past and a wall before dreadful calamities to come and before anarchy anarchy um, you know was something that was uh, quite dreaded at the time around the world and in, in, in Turkey it, it they associated it with uh, the the spread of communism etc etc no need to go into too much detail about it at this point the idea is that promoting these truths of the Quran and the Risale you know, as one of its announcers and a beautiful one at that would provide a wall before dreadful calamities it, it may be you know calamities that god sends to people as punishment earthquakes storms etc and there are many incidents in, um, instances when uh, earthquake would st stop when people start reading the resilient or, or when there is where uh, let's say there is a drought and then people start reading the Risale Nur and rain comes etc and before anarchy before chaos in society Salisan last section again this is not as relevant to the core of the argument in this episode but it is part of the letter therefore I would like to read it Bu Ramazan-ı Şerif'te Kur'an-ı Kur'an'ı zevk ve şevk ile okumaya benim çok ihtiyacım vardı. Halbuki elemli hastalığın, maddi ve manevi sıkıntıların, yorgunluğun ve meşgalelerin tesiriyle telaş ettim. Birden Husrev'in şiirin kalemiyle mucizatlı yazılan mucizatlı cüzler ve mucizatlı ve uh, Hafız Ali ve Tahiriye pek çok sevap kazandıran parlak ve kerametli Hizbül Ekber'i Kur'aniye'yi birbiri arkasından okumaya başladım. Öyle bir zevk ve şevk verdi ki bütün o yorgunluklarımı hiç indirdi. Hiçbir vesveseye meydan vermeyerek pek parlak bir surette dersi Kur'an'ı onlardan dinlerken bütün ruhu canımla arzu ettim ve kasıt ettim ve azmettim ki mümkün olduğu derecede aynı Hizbül Ekber'i Kur'an'ı gibi mucizatlı Kur'an'ımızı fotoğrafla tab edelim. İnşallah tab edeceğiz. Third I was much in need of reading the Quran with delight and enthusiasm in this honorable Ramadan. Again, this is a letter written to convey a an idea that was inspired to Ustad Nursi's heart on the on the night of power during Ramadan. And he is saying in this Ramadan, this is what happened. As usual as he does in every Ramadan, I was looking forward to the Ramadan to read the Quran. Ramadan is the month of the Quran and we read the Quran we increase our effort to read the Quran and engage the Quran in this month right so he was looking forward to it he wanted to read it with delight and enthusiasm yet I panicked under the influence of a painful sickness he got sick material and metaphysical troubles fatigue in and, and many chores at this time we start nor sees uh, he should be in his uh, early 70s old there, there are several sicknesses that he is suffering from and at the same time uh, there are many things that he has taken on himself and he is doing again the Risale Nur is being uh, copied uh, by hand and in order to make sure that all those copies are accurate they send everything to him and he reads them all in edits uh, you know reviews make sure that they are accurate to they are true to the original text 
and he's spending all his day doing this and there are all these letters that are coming to him from his students around the country sometimes they ask for advice sometimes they just ask they don't ask for something but they expect their you know letter back so he's very busy and tired and sick and he's panicking he's like concerned that he will not be able to read the quran in ramadan as he wants then all at once i started to read the miraculous parts of the quran written miraculously in husrev's agreeable pen and the bright hizbul akbar qurani that is full of divine favors and that earned much spiritual rewards for hafiz Ali and tahiri once uh, one after the the other so his very uh, Qurani is selection of verses from the Quran that were especially inspiring in the writing of the Risale Inur scholars uh, throughout history have done this they um, you know, put together hizbs they put together uh, verses sections of the Quran that they find most uh, aspi- inspiring and interesting to themselves so Ustad Nursi prepared a hizb uh, with the verses that were most inspiring in the writing of the Risale Inur, and then his students, two of his students, Hafiz Ali first and then Tahiri, uh, wrote this by hand, and he had that in his hands, and he starts reading that. And also, there is this um, miraculous Quran uh, that uh, one of another one of Ustad Nursi's students, a very good scribe, uh, Husrev Al Timbashak writes it's called Mujzeli Quran or miraculous Quran now the Quran is miraculous uh, for many reasons one of those reasons appears uh, to Ustad Nursi as he is engaging deeply engaging the uh, uh, Quran and the Quran that he has is what we call or what is generally called the the the uh, script of Hafiz Uthman a script that was written I think I should uh, research it better, but I think in the 19th century with a uh, scribe, uh, probably Egyptian uh, scribe, Hafiz Uthman, and then uh, printed widely in the printing houses of Egypt uh, in the in the 19th century. So it was widely available in the Muslim world, the script of Hafiz Uthman. And one beautiful thing and a miraculous thing that that script has is that uh, Hafiz Uthman decided to use the length of the shortest chapter of the Quran which would be either Kawthar or Ikhlas as the measure for uh, one line in his uh, script so each line in that uh, script of the Quran is measured to the length of uh, Surat Al-Ikhlas or Surat Al-Kawthar and then he decided to use the longest verse of the Quran, which is the uh, verse of depth uh, in the in, in Surah Al-Baqarah, the second chapter of the Quran, as the measure for the length of uh, his pages. So every page in that Quran is uh, measured according to the length of this uh, verse in Surah Al-Baqarah, in the chapter, uh, the second chapter of the Quran and it turned out that when he wrote in this way the verse that was the last verse of every page ended at the end of the page there is no verse that runs over into the next page it's miraculous like how how can you plan this and you you could say maybe he tried to squeeze some of the letters and ex- expand some of the letters there might be let's say five percent uh, that you gain from from that but otherwise you know if the verse that comes at the end of that page was four uh, four lines longer you couldn't do it you can't squeeze things that much or you, you can't expand things that that that much right so it fit perfectly mashallah it was a visual miracle of the quran now Ustad Nursi has this uh, print of the Quran and he's reading it and he starts to see that there are other uh, visual miracles in this he for instance the, the the word Allah if there are let's say six uh, it is mentioned six times on a page they all line up or if you were to take a pin and pierce through that uh, word Allah on that page and get to the following page there is Allah there too 
especially the names of God. Other things too, like some phrases line up. Uh, so there is enormous congruence of things. And he starts to recognize these and mark them with a pen, right? And then gives it to uh, Husrev Altun Bashak. And Husrev Altun Bashak writes the Quran by color coding those congruences. And it's enormous. It's available on the uh, internet too. It's so beautiful. I mean, first of all, Sir Walton Bashak, Bashak's script is so beautiful and legible, but also looking at how these colors align with each other. So days, it shows it even to, to children, kids who don't know how to you know, read and write, even they can see this miraculousness. So that is the miraculous parts, sections of the Quran. Later, Sir Walton Bashak will write the entire Quran. Right, so he says, Ustadner says, this gave me such a delight and, and, and enthusiasm that all my tiredness disappeared as I was listening to the Quran's lesson from them in a most bright way without the interference of any obsessive thoughts. So he's so engrossed in it that obsessive thoughts are not coming. Satan also is, of course, chained. It's Ramadan. I desired with my entire spirit intended and made a determination to have our miraculous Quran, the one that Husra Walton Bashak is writing, printed in the same way that we have had the Hizbul Akbar Qurani printed. So this, this should be early 1950s, not late 1940s, um, because that's when it happened. And we will do so, God willing. Al-Baqi, who Al-Baqi? The everlasting one, he is, God is, the everlasting one. Kardashian is your brother, Said Nursi. Your brother, Said Nursi. End of letter. So, we should all, inshallah, try to expose our spirits and hearts and intellects to these truths and pray that they settle in there. They take root. They take root in our hearts and become true knowledge. They become Gnosis, deeper understanding of reality as reality is. And then we should also we should recognize, we should pay attention to and recognize that urge to spread that message. And do what what we can. We should all do what we can. Humanity is wounded. And that's an abstract concept. Perhaps it may not you know, mean much uh, to, to people. Like, what is humanity? It's, you know, it's everybody out there, and it is not concrete enough. The man walking in the street, when you look out the window, is his heart, if he is a non-believer, is wounded. There are many people out there who are looking for truth who are trying to fill the, the vacuum in their heart and existence that arises from this desire for everlastingness and inability to find it, to understand it. The inability to understand the meaning of reality as reality is. We are blessed to, to be exposed to it. We are blessed to be given it in this, in this uh, you know, condensed, a beautifully explained form through the inspiration of the Quran. We are blessed to be exposed to the message of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we need to share the blessing. Blessings increase as they are, they are shared. If you want more of it, we need to share it. Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma allamtana innaka anta al-alim al-hakim wa akhir da'wahum an alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin al-fatiha Allahumma salli